um, very instrumental to me. Um, I could not have gotten, uh, Clark Lane University, for those who don't know, is an HBCU, Historically Black College and University. Um, and just a little history, um, Historically Black colleges and universities were necessary in the early days because we could not, as uh, African Americans, attend universities um, that Caucasians could. We had to create our own universities. Um, so that's why they were created originally. Today, we still have those universities. They teach even broader subjects, but I really feel like they're more nurturing to the students who go there um, and they produce some of the best students in the world. Um, so they, when I was sick and everything, my professors there surrounded me, encouraged me, nurtured me. They were my extended family. They really mm -hmm. helped me. Um, I can't say I got that support from the Evans Church. Um, and you're not gonna hear me say that I got a lot of support from the Evidence Church. I will mention specifically, um, there are support people that I've gotten from the Evidence Church. Um, there are some people on this call who have been supportive to me and they're in the Evidence Church. But um, uh, Dr. Perry actually asked me, I was out at a presentation. I can't remember if she was in the audience or was she the one who, had the presentation, uh, but she, we talked after the presentation and she asked me to come to her students at um, Alabama A&M. Once again, another historically black college and university in Huntsville, Alabama. And I came to speak to her graduate students. And in the middle of my presentation, they said, you need to be a student here. Well, I had ran for 15 years from being a social worker. And that was in the spring of 2013, uh, 2010. And I finally said, I give up. I'm going to go back to school. And the reason why I decided I was going to go back to school is because I was married to a man who had been abusing myself and my children. Wow for so many years. He was a theology major from Oakwood University, but he was an alcoholic and he was abusing us. And I knew I had to leave him, but I couldn't leave him with just a bachelor's degree in psychology. So I had to get more education. So when Dr. Perry's class asked me to come to school, that was my answer and my ticket out of a, an abusive marriage. So I decided to um, go attend school. Well, the first semester when I attended school, my aunt was murdered. Oh, God. And the professor surrounded me. She was brutally murdered. It was all over national news in the United States. And the professor surrounded me and helped me get through that semester. And in the course of time, throughout that time, uh, there was tornadoes throughout all of the state of Alabama. And they were, the school was there for us. Um, I was in a bad accident. Well, that was after the, uh, things. I left my husband. Well, when I left my husband, it was a student. It was another classmate that let me stay with her. And the reason why I left my husband is because I knew he was going to kill me. Um, and I, I had to leave him. Um, so then there was, my mom got really, really sick and eventually she died. And again, my professors were there for me. Um, I got real sick and had a nervous breakdown and my professors were there for me. I got a divorce and my professors were there for me. Mm -hmm. So you ask me, I, I'm not strong on my own. I'm not hardly strong on my own. The HIV community, the gay and lesbian community, my social work community and my professors, my family, 
my friends, some within the Adventist church, um, they have really given me strength. I am only as strong as those who lift me up. I know. Um, I have been literally homeless for the last two years, but I don't appear homeless because I've had friends who have housed me. I have a friend who has given me a car to drive so that I don't have to walk. I have friends who have taken care of me and helped me through this hardship that I'm going through right now. I am always only as strong as those around me and most of all, as strong as God who gives me strength. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I will always give him the credit because when I'm alone and no one else is around, he's always still there for me. And I always remember that um, through every trial I've been through. He has been the constant that's always been there. Um, I will say there are people um, that have been there for me. Um, Pastor James Doggett. I feel is sort of my lifetime pastor. Um, he always, every time he saw me, would give me a incredibly big hug and his children would always give me a big hug. Uh, pastor Delbert Baker, our babysitter, his kids, um, mm -hmm. would always give me a big hug. Um, and he used to be the past, he used to be the president of Oakwood University. A lot of people had a difficult time with him, but for me, um, I don't even know if he knows I'm HIV positive, but he was always make time for me because I was lived up the street from him and was there for him to take care of his kids. And he helped my mother out who was a single parent. Um, as the church, the church has helped my family a lot. I would not have received Christian education if it wasn't for the church because mm -hmm. I spent all of my elementary and academy years in Christian education except for from kindergarten to high school. I spent all but three years in Adventist education because mm -hmm. the church helped my mother pay for it. There was a time when my mother had but maybe three or four cans of food in our cabinets and we lived in Oregon and it was Livingston Junior Academy brought um, food and we um, had so much food. It was over abundance of food. Mm -hmm. And after that, my mom said, I'm starting a food co-op and we never had to worry about food again. So the church has been helpful at times, but unfortunately, I've watched the church and I don't usually get invitations to go to people's houses. There's a mm -hmm. few Adventists who will invite me to their homes, but on the whole, they would invite my children, my son to their home, um, but not me. Uh, ironically, I knew other people in the church who are HIV positive that they would have over all the time, but they weren't out with their status. And I find that interesting because just because they don't know that a person is HIV positive, they assume that the person they're talking to doesn't have HIV. Mm -hmm. And so they assume that they're okay, but the person who's open about it, they, they want to ostracize when in reality, they should act as if everybody has HIV unless they actually know their status. Yeah. Because in reality, there's a lot more people. I would sit back in church in some of these churches and just count all the people who had HIV as they came in. And if they knew what I knew, they would have been surprised. Wow. Um, well, you, you've answered some one um, person's question that came through, yeah, um, about how you were treated. Um, how did your children, how were your children regarding the 
you know, in the circumstances of your the HIV, are they healthy? Both my children are healthy. It's a miracle that my daughter's healthy because according to statistics, a three and a half day labor, she was, you can get HIV through really only a few ways. It's mm -hmm. easier to get the coronavirus than it is to get HIV. Yeah. Um, and I need to get to, there's two topics I want to get to before I finish. And that okay. is the part that how I am un um, untransmittable and also um, Corona and HIV. So don't let me forget that. Okay. But uh, the only ways you can get HIV is through blood, semen, vaginal secretions, and breast milk. People ask about uh, saliva. Well, you can get it through saliva if you're gonna drink about five gallons of it. Okay. Anybody trying that today? <laughs> so um, my daughter was exposed to my vaginal um, fluids for a long time. Mm -hmm. Three hours she was exposed to that and she doesn't have HIV. It took me a year to find out because in 1994, we didn't have the testing that we do today. Yeah. It took me in 1999, when my son was born, it took me, I think only two months. And ironically, I had written uh, some uh, workshops on perinatal transmission which mm -hmm. led me to speak at the United Nations later. But I wrote some for patients and also for providers. And at Piedmont Hospital in Atlanta, Georgia, they were serving me on um, plastic plates and silverware. And my mom noticed it after I gave birth to my um, son. So I mentioned it and the doctor was interested in knowing about perinatal transmission and so I asked my coworker from AIDS Survival Project to bring my material up. And I did an in-service from my hospital bed to him and two other nurses mm -hmm. um, right after having a C-section. Okay. Um, so both my children are HIV negative. And I told them, they've always known that their mother's HIV positive. And I told them, they, if they get HIV, then I'm really going to be disappointed because they've known more than anybody else um, exactly the do's and the don'ts. But I'm very proud of my daughter because she went to the uh, Cater Seventh-day Adventist Junior Academy, I think is the name of that, in the Atlanta uh, area, Atlanta, Georgia area. She was in first grade and she spoke to the third or fifth graders. And she and my mother took a book called My Grandma Has AIDS. Mm -hmm. And they did a presentation. My mother and her did a presentation on HIV um, when she was only in the first grade. Do you think that we should be sharing this information more worldwide? You know, um, the perception of uh, people with uh, um, HIV. Uh, I, I had a friend at, at school and uh, it was years later I found I, when I was working at the counter that he came in and he told me he was HIV. And you know, the, the time I, I knew him, we were about 11 years of age. And while I was working for 25 years, he for that whole period, he was suffering from it. Um, and some people just wouldn't go near him. So I was always the one who said, just come, come speak to me. How was it for, how do you- Actually, you, you led me into the topic I wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, yes. If we were to talk about this topic, people aren't talking about it as much today because the medications have gotten to be less toxic. They're, they're much better today. People don't get sick from the medications like they used to. 
some people may have a side effect, but nothing usually like the side effects that I experienced in the early days. Um, it's usually just one pill a day. My pills were awful when I had to take them in. Sometimes we used to joke we had to have a, a refrigerator on our back to walk around to carry our pills because they had to stay cold. And if they didn't, it, we had a high price to pay. But today, the medications are easy. If we talk about it, get tested. If you have it, get um, medications. If you don't have it, um, stay negative. There's even ways to stay negative. Um, but let me first say about the medication part. If you have it, you can take medications and it's called U equals U. If you take the medication and become undetectable, you can become untransmittable. That means that I, which I am untransmittable right now, I can't transmit the virus to anybody. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about transmitting the virus to anybody else. I still am going to be up front and tell people uh, if I'm in a relationship, I'm going to tell someone that I have the virus, but it is not possible for me to transmit the virus to anybody unless something happens with my medications and my viral load becomes detectable. So if everybody were to get tested and find out their status and take the medications, um, if they have it and become untransmittable, then we can't spread the virus. We can eradicate it. Also, if you're in a relationship with somebody mm -hmm. who has the virus, you can also take PrEP. And I'm pretty sure PrEP is on the TVs in um, England, just like it is here. But PrEP is a medication that you can take that will help prevent people from getting the virus um, who might be at higher risk of getting the, briar, uh, the virus. This virus, unlike Corona, is 100% preventable. 100% preventable. Mm -hmm. But you know why it's spreading? Because we're not talking about it. Right. We're keeping our heads in the sand, but we don't stop doing the actions. We do the actions behind closed doors in secret or sometimes in public, but um, like tattooing and stuff like that or different things like that. But we're doing the actions still that help promote it. So, yes, if we were to talk about it, we need mm -hmm. to keep these conversations going. Okay. Got a question that came through. Um, what help is there for HIV? Um, what help is there? Yeah. What help is there available? Okay. In the United States, in most, well, all the states, there are programs that um, will help pay for medications. Mm -hmm. If you can't afford your medications, there's what we call the Ryan White Care Act. Um, Ryan White was a young man who was um, a hemophiliac um, back in the 80s and died from uh, complications of AIDS. Mm -hmm. And in his honor, um, his mom gave the rights and named it the Ryan White Care Act. So there's money given. People don't realize this. But people living with HIV, if they are getting services from HIV uh, specialists and organizations, mm -hmm. they actually have the best health care in the United States. The best. Wow, okay. The absolute best. I mean, I've had cancer or pre-cancer four times. And they've caught it. 
before it actually went to the stage where I've had to get chemotherapy or radiation. My brother has stage four lung cancer and has had to have radiation and chemotherapy. The other family members I have have not been as lucky either. And some of them have died. Um, I get everything caught early because I get the best medication, I mean, uh, medical treatment in the country. So I don't know what's actually available in England, but I do know that we are, we do have access here to some of the best healthcare and you don't have to be Michael Jordan to get it. Okay. Um, are there, um, maybe we can find out if there's anyone who has a question? Someone said, what do I mean by non-infectious? Can I explain a little bit more? Um, that one, when I say non-infectious, it means that um, it does not mean that I am cured from HIV. The HIV is still, we have lymph nodes, which are in our neck and different places in our body. The HIV is probably still in those lymph nodes, mm -hmm. but it's not running rampant throughout the body where it can actually, it is such a low number in the body that it cannot be detected and it cannot be transmitted to another person. Um, therefore, I cannot transmit it to another person at this time. Okay. Um, that? okay. And um, what I can do is I can give a link after this that will explain um, that a little bit more. I can attach a link to a um, fact sheet about that if someone, if you're interested. Okay, uh, that sounds great. That sounds great. You were telling me uh, um, yesterday about some of the um, things that has helped you, like the devotions. You were also telling me about um, Max. Licardo, the books that you had, you you read for your devotions that is that has actually given you the strength to. Um, can you give me give us more information about that, please? Yeah. Um, what Shirley is referring to is, um, I, I have both um, HIV, but what's actually the most um, difficult for me is my mental health. And um, some of that has come about from being in an abusive relationship, but also some of that has come about from some of the things that I've gone through at the church. Um, and as a result of some of the things I went through at the church, I stopped attending church um, because it got to be the point that just I suffer from severe anxiety disorders, um, a few anxiety disorders. So it got to be to the point where just going to, into a church would cause me so much anxiety. I would have an anxiety attack. Um, so it wasn't the Adventist message that I was opposed to. It wasn't God that I was opposed to, but it was the fear of being ostracized, being criticized. It was, the fear of how I was being treated, um, that I was doing that. So I started doing um, church at home and I found, um, I wanted to get help with my anxiety. So I found a book, um, Anxious for Nothing by Max Lucado. Um, and I've been doing that devotion um, to help me um, get past anxiety. I'm actually grateful for this pandemic because 
I've been able to attend church every Sabbath um, mm -hmm. online, mm -hmm. actually sometimes twice a day because I do it on two different time zones mm -hmm. and I get uh, two sermons instead of one. I guess that I could go to more time zones and get even more. Um, and now I'm actually sort of looking forward to going back to church. So I feel like what the devil intended to be harmful by shutting down the churches was a blessing to me and hopefully for many others. Um, because I now hopefully will be able to go back into a church without feeling anxious because the pastor at the church here, Pastor Snell, preached on some of my anxieties related to um, going to church. <laughs> so I, I'm hopefully will be able to go now. Okay, amen. You also were, spoke about your garden and the therapy, how it was, it's therapeutic for you. Maybe you can tell us a bit of bit about your garden and how you feel it's helping you yes my garden I wish I could tell you how big it is but I don't know exactly how big it is but I can tell you that some people have looked at it and said I'm more of a farmer than a gardener <laughs> um, because if you look at one part of it is huge but then when I explain that it's actually one, two, three, four more parts, there's three more parts on top of that, you get the picture that it's quite a bit. I, early on in a pandemic, I felt impressed by God um, that it was going to be beneficial to have this garden this year. There's only two people who live in this house, but I have found gardening to be my, my way of dealing with my mental health issues, my anxieties, my depression, and so forth, um, to cope with it. It's how I deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, it's how I've worked off my way off of, the, um, off of uh, disability the first time, and Hopefully I'll work myself off a second time um, that way because I'm getting ready to go back on it. But um, this garden, it's very therapeutic because it's also a way of service. Um, this time, there's only two of us that live in a house, so there's no way in the world we can eat all the um, food that's gonna come from this garden. Mm. So the service, that's going to be from this art garden is that there's so many families that have been affected by this pandemic that do not have the money to buy food prices. I don't know if they're going up there, but food prices are going up here. Mm -hmm. And they people, start, even, yeah. yeah, even they're if people, if you get help from the government to get your food, mm -hmm. like here it's called food stamps or SNAP you're not gonna be able to spread that, those benefits as far. So you're not gonna, you're gonna have to choose. You may have to get frozen or canned fruits and vegetables instead of fresh. But these are gonna be food that we can give away. Right. And that is going to be my ministry to others. And that, to me, that's a blessing um, to be able to do that. Um, my gift in life is service. Um, I think that's my spiritual gift is service oriented. Um, so, yeah. Well, Marty, I think you're an absolutely remarkable lady. Even though you're going through these, you are still, um, way, you, you're still thinking about others. You're thinking about ways you can help other people. Um, I just noticed the question. I didn't know whether you, it came up, came up on your side. Did you see the question? Um, from, okay, um, I was not aware that the medications can also cause, um, can cause anxiety. 
but I do know that the medications have a lot of side effects. And what I have done is I take a lot of natural supplements. Um, I take a lot of vitamins. I, take, I eat healthy. Um, unfortunately, I have a lot of other health problems um, that have caused me to be in such that I can no longer be a vegetarian. I was raised a vegetarian. But there's a lot of foods I cannot eat. So many so that if I tried to be a vegetarian, I would be malnourished. Um, but I try and eat as healthy as possible. Of course, I don't eat any unclean meats. Um, I, but I do do a lot of the um, herbs. Another thing I do is I'm growing my own herbs for teas. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking into making my own teas for municipal purposes and for pleasurable purposes. Hopefully one day I will be able to market my teas so that I can sell them for, um, sell them on the market. Right now I'm just experimenting with them um, and learning how to just mix them and do different things with them. Um, but hopefully in the next few years, I will report that I'm actually making teas for municipal purposes and for other purposes too. So that uh, this other person was talking about using uh, natural stuff. I am a believer in using natural stuff, um, but I also use the medications. Um, and for my anxiety, I know a lot of people do not believe in it, but I use actually CBD oil. Um, I don't believe in the uh, THC, the part of the marijuana plant that causes um, the high, okay. because I don't want to ever get a high, mm -hmm. but the CBD oil, it really helps my anxiety, pain, and so forth, so many other things a lot, and I feel like it's a plant that God put on this earth for a reason, and like many plants on this earth, you are supposed to use parts of the plant, but not all the plants. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the same with the marijuana plant. You're supposed to use parts of it, not all of it. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what I use for my anxiety is the CBD oil. Okay. So any... been asked there about the counts. Um, what count are you talking about? Are you talking about the CD4 count or are you talking about the viral load? Okay. Um, the question was put out there. Can we just clarify? The viral load. Okay, so... Um, let me see if I can read that whole thing. Um, so you're using um, holistic medication and your viral load is dropping by uh, using clonics and enemas. That is amazing. That is amazing. That's wonderful. And, that's and they're taking no meds. That's yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So good. that is absolutely wonderful. I've tried taking no meds at times. And uh, right before the time that I got really desperately ill, I was on a no med holiday and mm -hmm. I started getting sick and I was getting close to an AIDS diagnosis. And so that's why we put me back on medication. Um, and there was another time I went on no man's holiday. And so for me, um, and the same thing happened. So for me, taking medications has been important. Um, but that's great if you can do that. Really? Okay. Um, you can, if afterwards, I would like to talk to you. Yeah. Um, I think there, I think there's a way that we can get in touch, um, and so we can talk. So that's 
that's a um, great information that's been shared there by Lenova. That's yeah, that's yeah. great. Um, okay, we are um, now, coming. I wanted, I wanted to share something about uh, the coronavirus. Okay, yes. A friend of mine uh, came up to me the other day, and I think it was yesterday, and she mentioned about the coronavirus um, and me not being um, as at risk mm. getting HIV. And I wasn't going to actually mention it, but um, then I looked um I looked I looked it up and I said okay I found it on several sites mm. and because a lot of times I'll find the early information and I'm not really feeling comfortable with mentioning this but uh as far as the coronavirus is concerned people living with HIV and on effective antiretroviral treatment which is what I'm on are currently not at risk, not at an increased risk of getting coronavirus or developing serious symptoms. People living with HIV not on treatment or virally suppressed may be at a greater risk. So they need to speak to their healthcare professional for more information on how to stay healthy. As with the general population, it talks about what we already know, older people living with HIV or those with other underlying health conditions should take extra precautions to prevent the illness. But it is true that uh, people living with HIV and on effective medications mm -hmm. are at a um, decreased risk getting the mm. coronavirus from the corona oh that's certainly that's quite interesting to, yeah. to know that um got there that it, that it's because of it's a similar hiv that's been written down there well they're using they were using in china they started using antiretroviral medication on people with coronavirus, but what they found was they were in a much later stage of their diagnosis with the coronavirus. Mm. So they were going to redo it again and try it when they're at an earlier stage with the coronavirus to see mm. if they could actually be, if it could be more effective then. I have not been following that as closely Mm -hmm. um to see if it's effective actually i haven't been able to find the research on it um i've been looking for it i haven't found it yet um so i don't know if they published or i just can't find it or what um but the uh the places that i went to to find this information were three different legit websites um and i know they would not print something that was not Incredible. Mm. And that's where I found it. Okay. Well, we have three, two more minutes on the on the clock. Is there any other questions uh, from from anyone? Um, so with that, um, Marcia, I want to just give you, I just want to thank you. Thank and I want to thank God for being with you, for keeping you, keeping you strong, uh, that you can come today and share with us your life, all the things you've had to go through. Um, sometimes we just don't imagine, you know, what another person can be going through when we are on, our life is just going. So yes, we have the odd things happening, but you have just been through so much, your story, and you just are an inspiration. I pray that, you know, God will continue to help you to 
give you the strength being, uh, to in, keep encouraging you to help those who are, are struggling in the same way with the, your, with your um, all these illnesses, you are still a force to be reckoned with. And uh, I really wanna thank you for sharing your information, sharing your life with us today. Um, and I pray that we will keep in touch. And uh, if anyone wants to um, have more information, there is a web, you've got a website that you can, um, you want to give a pass on I your website? I don't have a website. Oh. Um, I can, I guess I can be, <laughs> I got WhatsApp. Um, <laughs> Um, and I got my email. You yeah. can reach me at Marcia, M-A-R-C-Y-A dot Gullett, G-U-L-L-A-T-T-E at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Okay, we're just finishing off with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we truly thank you for um, being our strength, being there with Marcia and um, letting us share her, in, her, her life with us. And we see the things that she's gone, gone through, but we see also that she's can, so connected with you that she's come out at the other side willing to um, be an inspiration for for so many so father we just thank you for this opportunity we thank you for being with us may you continue to work with uh, Marcia and all those who have are uh, in the same situation uh, father knowing that you're there may your hands stretch and touch those who are in abusive relationship, those who are going through so many illnesses, um, those who are recovering from sickness, those who have lost loved ones along the way. And right now we're losing loved ones uh, um, from the coronavirus constantly. But we put our, uh, we just put our faith and trust in you, dear father, that you will get us through. You, you've made a promise to us. So we're gonna hold on to you, Father, on the promises of you. So be with us now, we pray, and be with Marcia. May she continue to be the strength and um, the encouraging woman that you have made her to be. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Marcia, thank you so much, thank you. And I'm going to keep be in, keeping in contact with you, if that's fine with you. Yeah. Yes, it is. You, you yes, are. Is. You have become a real friend to me the, for the last couple of days that I have been, in, you know, in contact with you. You. So, I just want to um, thank everyone for uh, logging in. Thanks for sharing. And uh, there's so many, many are, are saying thank you for sharing. Um. So. Thank um, you, Marcia, and thank you, Shirley, and everyone who joined this program. Marcia, maybe it would be helpful if you could put your email address in the link um, so that if there's anybody here that has any questions um, that they didn't feel comfortable asking, perhaps they can reach out to you. And also for that other person who you want to exchange details with, mm -hmm. they will be able to contact you that way. Is it yeah. there? Yeah, excellent, excellent. So thank you everyone for um, participating in this programme and we have more to come um, over next weekend and we wish you a wonderful week. And thank you for having thank you for having me. I really like what you guys are doing. I like your programs that I've seen thank before. You. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Gail thank and you. Dee. Yeah, and That's thanks everyone, Ingrid and Cheryl and 
Yeah, and, and everyone that's on, uh, um, Leah, I can see quite a few names. So thank you all for participating. And we have much more coming up this weekend. We have Dr. Helen doing part two of diabetes. And then on Sunday, for those of you who know Chris Thomas, um, we did a run through today and she's got an exciting presentation on um, fuel enough and that's just about breakfast and it's really really good so you don't want to miss it okay so and thank you and we will be in touch okay thanks <laughs> bye okay. have a lovely bye week bye. everyone thank bye. you bye and um, if is there an opportunity if anybody wants to talk to you off screen that they can do it so i can come out of the zoom but if anyone wants to talk to you directly off screen they can do that as well is there that opportunity are you I'll willing to stay on I'll stay on for a while. Yeah. Also, I wanted to know how I could um, link this. Uh, I got this off the internet, but I wanted to link it to so that okay. people could look at it. So, are you able to send that via? Uh, are you able to send it via WhatsApp to me or email? Can you scan I can it send it via WhatsApp. And then I can ask them to um, share it in the link below. I think that would be easier. So I'm going to link off. I can see Dal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm going to link off now so that if anyone wants to talk to you off um, without the camera rolling, then they'll have an opportunity to do that. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you, bye -bye. everyone. Thank bye bye. You. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Hi. Hey, Deli. Hi, Hi Del. How are you doing? Hi. Marcia down there. That's my friend Delphine. And that's Marcia. Hi. Wait, there, it's going, it's moving around so much. <laughs> okay. It's bye, still Del. recording. But are you going, Deli? Yeah, I'm going. All right. Love bye. you, babes. Bye. It's still recording. Parkside is um, the guy from Parkside. Is he? Is still recording, Tony? I think they're off now. But it's still saying recording. It does, doesn't it? Your your daughter said, um, "Well done, Mum." Did you see that? No, I didn't. I saw it. She, she was on here? Looks so, Lioness. That was, Mariama was Lioness? It, I think so. It said, well done, Mom. How far down was it sort of? It came up. I saw as it. But there's, I mean, you were still, we were still recording, so I couldn't say anything. I was like, oh, nice. No, she's. Yeah, did you, what happened? Amanda just called me. I'll decline her call. Oh, wait, Lionette, that could be my daughter in law. Oh, okay. Because it said mom, not mom. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I got, you know, three kids now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe maybe they're both together there. No, she's still in Texas, I think. Well, my daughter's still. It. My daughter's still in Texas. But does anybody have um, any questions? Who else is on? Uh, I still have Nanova, Dina, Kaya, uh, 